Okay, so in this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys something uh, pretty neat, and it's how to simulate a uh, camera shake. You know, so say for example, you have something really huge, like a like an asteroid or a huge rock, and it's falling to the ground, and you know it has that huge boom, that crash, and then the camera, you know, like vibrates or you know whatever, to um, you know to dramatize the effect of the impact, right? So. <clears throat> Let's use the uh, the pen the pencil tool, and let's say we have this is the uh, it's like this the ground right, and let's put a, a tree in somewhere. Okay, so I have a tree here. All right, it's a pretty weird tree. Um, it's an email. Okay, so we have a huge, you know, we have this tree here, we have some bushes around it, whatnot, right? Okay. And some more here, right? Right, so <clears throat> there we have it, that's our ground, right? Now, uh... Now, okay, let's lock this layer. Lock and let's create a new layer. Now, on this layer, I'm going to create, I'm going to draw a huge uh, rock, right? This is what's going to fall and create that huge impact, right? So let's um, fill it. Already had that brown selected. Um, and let's make that rock a symbol because we're going to tween it. Whenever you're tweening something, it has to be a symbol. Well, once it's a motion or, or, or a motion tween, it has to be a, a symbol. So let's call it rock. Right? So pretty much this is the scenario. We're going to have this this rock. Um, it's going to fall from out of space or somewhere, and it's going to go boom. And when it hits, it's going to cause everything to, like, you know, shake like that. The whole screen is going to shake. All right? So first, we have to create the um, motion of this falling, right? Like so. So, <clears throat> first of all, let's have the action. I guess give this like 30 frames. So this, the animation for this is going to take place in 30 frames, right? Now, I don't want the, uh, the rock to appear in the first frame. I want it to appear, let's say, the second frame. So this is how you, you move a frame. You just select it. You wait for that little box to appear and then you just click and hold and drag okay you click hold and drag and then you can wherever you you whenever you um, release that's where the key keyframe is gonna be okay so there you go so now you notice it's white here that means there's nothing there see the rock disappears okay so now whenever you want to have something appear to fall all you need is just have the thing appear in two places at the beginning and at the end okay so I'm gonna have it just barely breach barely show it of the screen actually you can get an idea by doing see that's how it's gonna look right there right so <clears throat> then I'm gonna have it fall so the next frame let's say uh, one two three like five frames later so it's gonna make its impact right so this is the final you know the first point of contact so now notice I'm not gonna have it just hit the ground like that because nothing does that okay journey when things fall it passes the point and then it bounces back up okay it may not necessarily you may it may happen so fast you won't notice it but that's what happens so it's gonna pass it's gonna pass uh, the ground level right it goes boom and then it's gonna you know almost like spring back up all right but it won't spring high up like you know as if it's it's a uh, it's a, a bouncing ball or something, right? So it's just gonna it's gonna breach the surface of the ground, right? And then, say two frames later, um, it's gonna rise up like that, right? So notice it does it doesn't it passes also, and two frames later it um, then it comes back, and then it lands like so. Actually, we could even have it rotate a little bit while it's um, falling. 
All right, so let's see how it appears. Uh, cool. So <clears throat> notice there is no in-between action, and that's why we add a tween. Tween is really a short for like in-between, okay? So it means from this keyframe to this keyframe, we don't see anything. We only see a pop. So what tweening does, it the computer automatically creates the in-between actions for us, okay? So create classic tween. Now, if you notice, as I scroll through, see, it does that automatically for you. That's what tweening really is. It creates in-between frames, okay? That's what tweening meaning really means. It's a short for in-between. So that's how it will appear. I don't really have to, you know, do any tweening there, actually. Since the frames, the action, action, the action, the action happens so fast, we don't really need to um, do anything. Okay, good. So, <clears throat> actually, I'm gonna adjust the tween to make it ease in. Ease in just pretty much means it will be slow on the initial of the action. So, easing in means slow in, and easing out means slow out. So, if you want an action to slow down at the end, you use ease out. It's so like it's easing out. And if you're, um, you want an action to be slow in the beginning, you use ease in. So generally when things fall, you know, by gravity, it accelerates or increases in speed. So you generally use uh, an ease in when you're having things falling due to gravity, okay? So let's see how it looks. Cool, all right? Now, so this is our animation. Now we want to have the whole camera shake going on okay how do we do that first thing we do is we're gonna make this whole thing a symbol and this is how you do that you select all your frames make sure you have the layers unlocked right right click and copy frames now we're gonna create a new symbol to do that command F8 and we're gonna call it um, rock falling or something right now this is the new symbol we've created. It's empty, and we're going to fill it with the frames we just copied. Paste. All right? And there it is. So it's, this symbol is going to appear in the library now as an animation. Here it is. Okay? <clears throat> so you can actually play it in this little window. See? And this is how you confirm if your symbol has been created. Right, you always have a little um, playback um, feature here. So let's go back to the scene. Now we can actually delete this whole thing that we just did because we have the symbol, so we don't need that anymore. Okay. Um, so now all we have to do, we have a new layer. We can just go to the symbol and drag it to the stage. And there it is. Okay. We can position it how we want. You know, and notice you can make this as small as you want or as large as you want, doesn't matter, okay? So I'm gonna make it around the size of the stage itself. So if we play it, that's what happens. See? So now how do we do the camera shake? Now this is what we do. So we're gonna find at what point does it contact the rock contacts the ground. Boom, right there, okay? It hits the ground right there at six, frame six. So make a keyframe. And at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to move the whole symbol downwards. So we'll do that like this. Just select it and drag, drag it down. See, you can even give it a little tilt, you know. And then we're going to make a next keyframe. And we're going to raise it above the last one. Now it goes up. Till we can tilt it the other way too. Right? And then it lands. Boom. So it's almost like it's almost imitating the action of the rock. And now we can actually... So now it's going to go back to its original position. So it's going to be stable. No action. The rock falls, boom. Rock lifts, boom. It goes up with it, and it, then it falls. Okay, so <clears throat> we want to have uh, this last frame actually be the um, 
the first, we want the last keyframe to be the first keyframe, okay? So we want to say that after it falls and it rattles the whole camera and everything, then it goes back to how it started. So we can copy this keyframe and put it and paste it here. How do you do that? You select it. Well, actually, I haven't clicked down on it. I just move my uh, the cursor over it until I see that box. Then I hold down Option, which is an Alt for Windows, and then you just drag it. And wherever I drop it, it will be pasted there. And there it is. There you go. All right. So notice that the original one is there. So if we play it, see, that's how it looks. So we can even play with it some more and exaggerate the, um, the shaking. Um, actually, we could make this go down a little bit. And then there you go. So this is frame 10, 11, 12. So notice that the rock isn't here, and that's because what's happening is if you go to properties and you look in looping, what's happening, each keyframe, this keyframe, at this keyframe, the action was starting over. We don't want that. We want the symbol to continue at frame 12. See, so you play once and then you hit 12. So basically what this is saying is, if you choose looping, at each keyframe, the symbol is going to start over. Because if we go into the symbol, notice it has 30, 30 uh, frames. Now, at each keyframe, you have to make sure that, that, say for example, we have keyframe, this is keyframe 1. And at the, other key, the next keyframe, we're at frame 6. So we have to make sure that the symbol says, play once and at frame six, okay? And this is at frame seven, so we make sure it's at play once, frame frame eight, six, seven, eight. This is at 10, play one at 10, okay? Or loop, it doesn't matter. But the point is, it, it cannot be at frame one, because if it's at frame one, it's gonna start the animation all over again each at each keyframe, and we don't want that, okay? We want it to continue as one continuous action. So at frame 12, there you go, all right? So now if we play it, see? So let's play the mini movie, and that's what happens. See, so it's pretty simple. Um, but you know, I just used a simple example just so you guys see the, the basic principle behind it and how it works, all right? So, I mean, you know, it's just up to your imagination and creativity what you can do with this. I mean, you can use this in all types of scenarios, okay? Um, so, you know, hopefully this helped, um, and, you know, you can use it to do whatever you want to do.